everybody, it's me, Miss Lisa. Today we are going to make totem poles, which are inspired by the artwork produced by the indigenous peoples of the Pacific Northwest Coast. But before we begin, I would like to share with you some really interesting and fun information that I learned about totem poles. Hopefully this information will inspire you in designing your very own work of art. Totem poles are beautiful works of art created by indigenous people of the Pacific Northwest Coast of Canada and the United States. These tribes include the Haida and the Tlingit, which were among the most skilled at these artistic carvings. The indigenous peoples of the Pacific Northwest did not have a written language. Family and tribal histories were passed from generation to generation through storytelling, and some of these stories were recorded on totem poles. The symbols on the totem poles were usually representations of animals, fish, and people, and sometimes included mythical creatures like the Thunderbird. The colors, when used as backgrounds for these symbols, were significant too. Most colors were paints made from salmon eggs, berries, and plants. Many colors did not last very long in the rainy Pacific Northwest climate. Totem poles were carved into red cedar trees from which the bark and branches had been removed. The totem poles we will make today, however, will include the bark so our animals and birds can be added to a smooth, even surface. Some totem poles were miniature and many could be as tall as 60 feet, which is about six or seven basketball players standing on each other's shoulders. The taller the pole, the more important the person or family to whom the pole belonged. Totem poles were carved by expert artisans using stone tools. After the indigenous peoples began trading with the European settlers, they were able to use metal tools. Not everyone could carve a totem pole, and expert carvers often traveled from village to village to create poles for wealthy or important families. Poles often decorated the entrance to a village or home, or could have been used as poles that helped hold up the roof of a house. Most totem poles were really big and really heavy and required a number of people to lift them into place using ropes. The raising of a totem pole was often accompanied by a ceremony of some kind too. Totem poles were not really read like a true story, but the symbols going from top to bottom would remind a viewer of a story perhaps they had heard at some point the story of the giant rock oyster is told on this pole. It is the story of several young men who went fishing at low tide. One of the young men chased a devil fish under a rock. He reached under the rock with his spear to catch the fish. The fish got away, but he was certain that there were still more fish under the rock. So he reached in further and his hand was caught by a giant oyster. Giant Oyster held onto his arm until the tide came in, and the next day the young man was taken by the sea. You can see at the bottom of the pole the young man with his hand caught in the rock oyster's mouth. In the following slides, we'll take a look at a few of the birds, animals, and other symbols you might find on a totem pole, and we'll take a look at what they might represent. The following slides also show a sample of Pacific Northwest indigenous art that represents the way animals, birds, and people appeared on clothing or carvings. You'll be able to see some similarities to the real creatures, but the important thing to know is that artists and carvers attempted to represent the animals and creatures, not create realistic drawings or carvings. Please remember this when you are working on your own totem poles. The wolf represents loyalty, success, and survival. In the drawing, you'll notice the wolf's ears, eye, and nose, and you'll see how similar they look to the real animal. 
The eagle and the salmon are pictured here together. The eagle represents strength and leadership and is known as the ruler of the sky. A salmon, which is a fish, represents instinct, dependability, and renewal. You can see the eagle's beak and his large eye in the drawing on the left, and you'll notice the salmon's hooked nose and his tail in the drawing on the left. The beaver represents wisdom, creativity, and a sense of family. The beaver often represents a family or a clan when it appears on a totem pole. In the drawing on the left, you'll see the beaver's nose and very prominent teeth. The bear represents friendliness, hospitality, and strength. You can see the similarities between the carved bear and the real creature. The frog represents a connection to water and also represents life. It is often depicted on totem poles along with raven. You can see in the drawing on the left the big eyes and the curved mouth of the frog. Raven represents trickery, mischievousness, and greed. Raven is a creature that is responsible for putting the sun in the sky. His curved beak and his shiny black eye are his most important features. Owls represent wisdom, watchfulness, and respect. They do not often appear on totem poles, but when they do, they appear with large round eyes and a pointed beak. The Thunderbird is a mythical creature, probably based on a hawk or an eagle, that can change into people. It is also responsible for creating thunder and lightning. The Thunderbird symbol often appears on a tribal leader's totem pole. Humans often appear on totem poles and they often represented real people, tribal leaders or members of their families. You can include a human on your totem pole if you would like. Your human can represent you or someone you know. The colors on the totem pole were used to enhance the details of the animals and birds featured there. However, when a color was used as a background to an animal or a bird, it meant something important. White represented the sky or the heavens. Red could represent blood or war. Blue symbolized water, sincerity, or happiness. Yellow represented the sun. Green represented trees and mountains. And black was often used as an accent color or as a color representing power. There are several things you will need to complete this project. A glue stick, a black marker, a pair of scissors, some clear tape, and a craft kit from the South Huntington Public Library. Your craft kit will include these materials. Three paper craft tubes, two sheets of totem pole mouths, two sheets of eyes, two sheets of noses, two beaks, six different colored shapes, three sheets of shapes that can be used as ears or feathers, one sheet of wings, and three sheets of brown paper that will be used as bark on your totem poles. You may also want to round up an old catalog or a few sheets of paper towel. This will be helpful when you're gluing your project. All right, let's begin. You 
may want to take a few minutes to cut out some shapes and lay them out on the table in front of you to get an idea of what you would like your animals' faces to look like once they are pasted onto your cardboard tubes, which will become your totem pole logs. Now, if you look very carefully at the way I cut, I did not cut right up to the black line on a lot of these shapes, and that's okay. Don't worry about it. When you look at totem poles, you'll notice that there are some deep black lines included in the designs. And I'm trying to capture that very same look here with my totem pole. And now you are ready to attach a piece of bark to one of the cardboard tubes. To do so, you will put glue on one side of the bark. And this is where your magazine or your catalog comes in handy. Open it up to one page. Put the glue on one side of the bark. And now turn the page in your catalog. Now you have a nice clean workspace that is not sticky and it's ready for you to glue another object. Attach your paper to the tube like this. Press it down. And if you would like to secure it, give it a little bit of extra security while you're turning, you may add a piece of clear tape just to tack down that one end of the paper before you begin to roll it underneath your bark. Roll and press as you go so your tree bark is nice and smooth. Like that. And then press the seam down. And we'll keep the seam on the side of our project like this. This is going to be where we will put the face of a bird or some other kind of animal. Okay, so let's start with the bird. Decorating the face of your totem pole is like creating a collage. When you create a collage, you want to work from the bottom to the top. So in this case, the first piece we will glue to the cardboard tube is the green. Then we will add the yellow beak and the two eyes. Then we will fold the wings on this solid line here and on this solid line here, putting the glue in the long skinny rectangle. We'll use the glue to attach the wings to our totem pole. And there's the face of my bird. Let's go over one more time how to attach the wings to the side of the bird. Here is one wing. We are going to fold it on that dark line there and give it a nice crisp crease. Unfold and add some glue to this rectangle. Now this part is sticky and this part is not. We are going to attach the sticky part to the side of the totem pole and leave the wing to stick out nicely on the side. Okay, and one more time. Here is your wing. Fold on the thick line. Give it a nice crisp crease with your fingers. Open it. Add glue to the up and down rectangle. and attach it to the side of your pole like this. And there we go. So there's the beginnings of a bird. If you would like, you can add some more feather shapes 
to go around the bottom. You could add small feather shapes to the wings. Let's see, here's a small feather shape. It can go inside the wings like this. It's totally up to you. Use your imagination and be creative. The second log in my totem pole is going to be an animal. It's either a bear or a beaver. I'm not sure exactly. But remember what we learned about the totem poles is that the animals carved there are just representations of animals. They don't have to look exactly like the real thing. Again, adding the face to the totem pole log is going to be like putting together a collage. We'll start with the blue shape first, then add the teeth and perhaps the eyes, the nose, and then the ears. I also wanted to show you what I did here with this creature, which I think is a beaver. You'll notice that I took some of the teeth out of one of the mouths in my kit and placed those on the face. I took a feather and I cut it in half. I will probably cut this one in half too and maybe cut these into smaller pieces to use as some kind of fur. I'm not exactly sure how it's going to look once it's on the log, but you don't have to keep the pieces as they are. Cut them and shape them in any way you choose. Here are my three totem pole creatures. Now we are ready for the final embellishment. And this is where your black marker comes in. So we'll work it with one at a time. I think we'll start with my bird. And what we're going to do is just add some lines to our design to give it a little bit more character and a little bit more personality. And the lines can be anywhere you would like to put them. If you don't want lines, that's okay too, but I like to add some extra black lines to make it look like a true wood carving. So you may lay it down on the table if that's easier for you and add your lines, as many lines as you would like. And I'm keeping the lines on the bark. Wooden totem poles usually have extra embellishments carved right into the tree itself. So that's what I'm going to do here. And if they are not straight, don't worry about it. And there we go. And added a few more along the bottom and the side, and I think I'll just fill in the forehead. with a few stripes, like that. And now you can do the same thing on the other two pieces of your totem pole. And now your totem pole creatures are complete and you can stack them in any way you choose. And if you get tired of looking at them like this, you can stack them in a different way. Just like that. So thank you for crafting with me today. I hope I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.